So on the x-axis here, we could uh, call it hours of sleep, right? And on the y-axis, we could call it grades. And you have some numbers here and some numbers here. The numbers don't matter, so I'm not even gonna put any numbers. But let's say that in general, the people that get you know a smaller amount of hours of sleep here, like down here somewhere, let's just say they have lower grades. So you have somebody here, lower grades, lower grades. You know, each little data point is somebody uh, with lower grades, right? But then as they get more sleep, let's say that grades seem to go in general in the up direction. Now it's not a straight line, but to get the idea, right? When someone has a very few, maybe one or two or three hours of sleep, they get low grades. Here's two different people with maybe like, I don't know, two hours of sleep and their grades were, you know, different than each other. They were a little different, but they were very close to the same grades. And as the number of hours uh, of sleep goes up, then the uh, grades also go up, right? That kind of makes sense. I think we could all probably agree that in real life, it probably, this is, pl this is plausible, right? Now, we wanna talk about, are, are these data correlated or not? All right, when it's correlated, all it means is that if you increase one of the data, the number of hours of sleep, is there a corresponding increase in the other data? And it appears in this case there is. As the number of hours of sleep goes up, the grades go up. So we say that's positive correlation of data. If you see a nice trend line, of course it's not exact line, but the, the data points form, they're, they're form dots here. This is called a scatter plot, and we're gonna draw a lot of them, so we're gonna get comfortable with it. But as we draw these, of course there's scatter dots all over the place, but you can still see a trend where as the number of hours of sleep goes up, the grades also go up, and that manifests as a general upslope in the data that we have there. So we say it's positive correlation. If you have the opposite, where let's say that we had high grades <laughs> with very low sleep and the data was going down, we would say that was negative correlation, right? So positive and negative correlation. Positive correlation means both data points go in general go up, or both uh, things that we're studying tend to go up at the same time. And negative correlation generally means that as one goes up, the other one goes down. They kind of fight each other. They go in opposite directions, right? And then we have something called no correlation. What if the hours of sleep had nothing to do with the grades? We'd have data points all over the place, but there would be no trend line at all. It would just be like a, you know, like a, like a bunch of dots randomly thrown on the board, all right? So that's called correlation. That's one of the most important definitions you'll learn in math. When you read scientific papers, we'll talk about the data is correlated. When we get into more advanced math, we'll, we'll calculate something called the correlation coefficient, which is a number that you can calculate that tells you how correlated is this data. In other words, the higher the number, maybe the more correlated it is, and the lower the number, the less correlated it is. So there's mathematical stuff we can do down the road, right? But I want to draw something to your attention that's extremely important, and it's one of the most important lessons in all of science and all of math. I want to repeat that because it might fly right over and you might think, oh, what is he talking about? It is one of the most important things you will learn in science and in math, the, one of the most important things. And that is the definition or the difference between correlation and causation. See, when two things are correlated, it just means they both go up or maybe it, the data goes down as the other one goes up if, if it goes down like this. That's just called correlation. It just means the data are related to each other some sort of way. But it doesn't say anything about one of the data causing and being the cause of the other. Causation is when one data or one, uh, one event or something actually causes something else, right? Just because these data both seem to increase does not actually mean that the number of hours of sleep causes better grades. That's probably the number one fallacy in all of science. When you read uh, reports and you know, armchair scientists or read something and they're like, oh, this means this. Well, it doesn't mean that it causes this. Let's think about it for a second. What this data is saying, all it is saying is that the students that had higher uh, amounts of hours of sleep also got higher grades. Now, the, the, the obvious conclusion or the wrong conclusion would be that if you get more sleep, you will, if you get more sleep, you will get higher grades. But that's not true because there could be a third reason that maybe would cause both of these to increase. Okay, let's just say that you have a population of students and some of the population of students are super highly motivated students. They're just really, really like, they really care about school. And then you have another part of the population that doesn't care as much. And then you have another part of the population that doesn't care about school at all, right? So 
Let's just say that of the people that are really passionate about school, they make time to go to sleep, they, they carve it into their schedule, and they make sure that they get enough sleep, and they also use all of their free time studying, so then they get the higher grades. So what's actually causing, in that case, the higher grades and the higher sleep is the person. Their internal motivation is what's causing that. In other words, these people over here, it, it might not be that the hours of sleep is actually causing the grades. It might be that these people over here are just very highly motivated people. They study all the time uh, because that's not on the chart at all, how much they study. They study all the time and they make time to sleep, right? They know that sleep is important. They set an alarm and they make time to sleep. So what's actually causing this is not these data points. What's causing it is the motivation of those people. The people down here, they may not care about school at all, but they may never study and they may stay up all night long because they're just partying or having fun or whatever it is. So when you see two things correlated, it does not mean that one causes the other. There's a phrase, correlation does not mean or does not imply causation. Just because two data points are correlated does not mean that one causes the other. I'm gonna say that again. Just, just because two data uh, uh, sets are correlated, they both go up, let's say, it does not mean that one causes the other. Third time, just because two data points are related to each other, they're correlated, it does not mean that one causes the other because there could be third factors or fourth or fifth factors that are causing really the behavior that you're seeing at the same time simultaneously in your chart. All right, with having said all of that, Let's get into the lesson now, right? I want you to, we're gonna identify, we're gonna draw the scatter chart, we're gonna identify if it's correlated or not correlated, but we're also gonna know that just because they're correlated does not mean that one is causing the other. That is not what it means. And that's one of the biggest fallacies in all of science. When journals write articles, it doesn't mean that they're causing this. It's very hard to prove what causes something else. When we say something's correlated, we're saying they're related. We're not saying that they're causing something else because we don't know for sure. It may be causing it, but we just don't know. So let's now take a look at problem number one. Here is a scatter plot. On the x-axis, we have the number of fish species in a pond. And on the y-axis, we have the number of plant species in a pond. So this is called a scatter plot. You can see why. It's because the points are kind of scattered. We could draw a line. I could draw a line to connect these dots. That'd be OK. But it kind of hides the actual data points, which is what you want to focus on, the dots. So we don't usually draw lines to connect the dots in a scatter plot. You could do it, but it would look a little weird. All right, so we just leave the dots there. That's why it's called a scatter plot. And what it means is that in a pond with one species of fish, we only had one species of plant. In a separate pond with two species of fish, we had two plant species. This pond had three species of fish and two plant species. This pond had four species of fish and five plant species. So you can see that in the ponds that have the higher number of fish species, they also had a higher number of plant species. So the question is, is this data correlated? That means, is, does there appear to be a relationship between this data? It appears that as the number of fish species increases, the number of plant species also increase, increases. You could kind of draw sort of a line through this data. Even though it wouldn't be perfect, you could sort of see that, and you could see that as one goes up, the other goes up, and that's called a positive correlation. So it's a positive correlation. If the data were going down like this, in other words, as the species of fish go up, the plant species goes down. If it were going down, that would be a negative correlation. This is a positive correlation. As one variable goes up, the other variable also was going up. And as I said later, in future classes, you can take this raw data and you can calculate something called the correlation coefficient, which is just a number. The higher the number, the more tightly correlated this data is to each other. So that's the correlation angle here. Now the question is, what does it mean? A lot of people look at this and say, well, it just means that as we put more fish in the pond, more species of fish, then somehow they're causing more species of plant to, ha ha to, to be in that uh, pond. In, in other words, the mistake people make is that as we increase the number of species of fish, somehow that is causing the uh, increased number of plants. That could be true. Maybe more species of fish somehow does cause that. But this data does not prove that that is true. In fact, there could be something else going on. Maybe in the ponds that have high fish and high uh, plants, 
Maybe those ponds have better pH. Maybe they're in better climates. Maybe there's something else going on with, that, with those other ponds. Maybe they're irrigated better. Maybe they have more oxygen. I can go on and on. You don't really know what's causing this. All you know is that the ponds with more species of fish have more plant species, but one is not necessarily causing the other. It could be some other factor causing both of these variables to be higher. And so we do not say that the fish species is causing the plant species to be higher. We just say that they're correlated. They're related to each other. This is a positive correlation. All right, so in this problem, I gave you the scatter plot. We determined what kind of correlation we had. Let's go on to problem number two, where I'm not giving you the scatter plot. I'm instead giving you the raw data. And we're going to draw our own scatter plot. Now, it's hard to tell from looking at just raw numbers like this, is the correlation positive or negative? It's, it's very hard. So what we need to do is draw our own scatter plot. This is a chart that shows the number of hours of study time you have and how many incorrect answers you have on an exam. So let's draw this scatter plot. At zero hours of studying, I actually get eight incorrect answers. So it's like zero comma eight. So it's zero comma eight. You just plot it like an XY point. No, nothing special. Then I have one comma five. One comma five is right here. And then I have three comma seven. Three comma seven is right up here. And then four comma five. Four comma five. And then we have five comma three, six comma three. So five comma three and six comma three, like this. And then we have uh, 8 comma 1, 9 comma 0. So 8 comma 1 and 9 comma 0. So here's our homegrown scatter plot that we have drawn uh, here. And we can look at it and try to draw some conclusions from it. Uh, we have our version that we have drawn here. You can see you plot these things just like XY points. We don't usually connect the dots because then it would go up and down and all this. We just want to focus on the dots. And I have a, a better version of it down here. You can see a little more clearly what's going on because it's a little, a little more cleanly drawn, uh, basically down here. So my question to you is, is this data correlated? Uh, in other words, is the uh, amount of hours of study time correlated to the incorrect answers or not? Now, if I were to draw a line through this data, there would pretty clearly be some sort of relationship that slopes downward. As the number of study time hours increases, the incorrect answers goes down. So remember, if both data points go up, 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 like in the fish example, then it's positive correlation. If as one variable goes up, the hours of studying, the incorrect answers go down, so they're going opposite directions, sloping down like this, we call that a negative correlation. I think that's pretty clearly a negative correlation. So uh, even though you can't really see it directly by looking at data like this, you can't, we're not a computer, we can't just look at this and tell usually, especially with thousands of data points, by graphing it and just by looking at it, we can see that there's a negative correlation there. Now, let me ask you one more question. Does this chart prove that the number of study hours is causing the number of incorrect answers to go down? I mean, that would be the obvious conclusion, right? You might look at this and say, well, it's clear that when you study more, you get less answers wrong. So you probably should study. Now, it's possible that that is true. It is possible that the number of hours of studying is actually causing the students to get fewer incorrect answers. It's true. But it might not totally be true. It might just be that those, per those people have a lot of experience with the test. It might be that those, per those people got a lot of sleep on the test day. Maybe they prioritize sleep. It could be that those people are just really familiar with chemistry or whatever it was. So I guess what I'm trying to say is even though the data looks pretty strong that this causes this, it doesn't prove it, right? Causation is different than correlation. Correlation just means they're related. It might be true that one is causing the other, but you might have to do further investigation to prove that. There could be other factors. Maybe these people that did well had a good breakfast that day. They literally could be anything. Maybe the people that did poorly um, had a bad cold, you know, or were just sick on that day, and so on and so forth. All right, let me take this down. We have one more problem to wrap up this lesson. All right, let's take a look at our last problem. Here we have a table of values. This is the chapter in a textbook, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, all the way to chapter 10. And here are the number of homework problems that are in the end of that chapter. So let's just see if the chapter number or the chapter placement in a book is related to the number of homework problems that are in the back of the book. So what you would do is you would treat this as X and this is Y and you would say 1 comma 4, 2 comma 10. So you go over here and you would plot 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 10. 
And you would do that for all the points. So, you know, 3 comma 1, 4 comma 8, 5 comma 4. 3 comma 1, 4 comma 8, 5 comma 4. And you would do that for all of the points. And when you do that, you would get this plot right here. Now, is this data correlated? Well, if I try to draw a line up, doesn't really look like it's following a trend up. It doesn't really look like it's following a trend down. Doesn't really look like it's following a trend sideways. The data looks all over the place. So is this a positive or a negative correlation? Uh, we actually say no correlation. So no correlation. So data does not have to be correlated, right? Um, if I plot the length of a bunch of people's toenails, you know, compared to the weather outside, that data is not going to be correlated. It's not even in the same universe. It's not even related at all, right? If I, if I plot uh, how many heads or tails I flip compared to what I had for dinner the night before for a bunch of different people, that data is not going to be correlated because it's completely unrelated. So the uh, chapter number of a book, whether it's chapter five or chapter 10, has nothing to do with how many problems the author decided to put in the back of the book. I mean, I guess it could sometimes, but in this case it didn't. And the way that shows up in the graph is that there's no clear trend line either way, positive correlation or negative correlation. So we just say the data is not correlated at all. All right. So in this lesson, we had two uh, main objectives. We wanted to talk about scatter plots, get used to drawing scatter plots, which are just X, Y dots that we can kind of look at and try to learn from. We talk about correlation when data points or data series are related to each other. If they're related to each other in a positive way, then that's called a positive correlation. When one data point increases in value, the other data point also increases in value. And then we have negative correlation where the opposite of that is true, where it slopes downward. And we have no correlation like this when it doesn't appear to be any relationship there. And we also were hammering home the idea that correlation does not imply, does not mean causation. When the two data points are correlated either way, it does not prove that one causes the other. It just says they're related. One might have influenced the other. One might even be causing the other. But that graph, that correlation is not by itself enough to say that they're causing each other. That takes a whole lot of additional analysis to try to eliminate other causes to make sure and isolate what, you know, what is actually causing what. And that's why when we do scientific trials for vaccines or medicines or whatever, those trials take a long time and a lot of statistical analysis because you have to prove that the drug that you're giving is causing the benefit and that nothing else is causing what you're seeing in the data. And you have to be sure that the data is correlated enough and in caused in the causation between cause and effect is where you expect it to be to show that it's safe for humans, just as an example, right? But this applies to anything. If you're going to build a power plant, if you're going to build a spacecraft, if you're going to build a bridge, you have to study this stuff to make sure that it's going to work the way you intend. And sometimes you have to use these sorts of methods. So study this yourself. Follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with correlation and scatter plots. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.